Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Chew. I'm Robert Wallace. This is the place where we ask, am I choosing the way of Jesus or am I choosing my own way? This journey that we're on with Jesus for Matthew 21 through 27, we've already got a sense of the trouble that is ahead of Jesus, the sweet spots, the blessed moments. Moving forward in the face of adversity is not something we generally embrace, is it? Rather, the opposite is our nature. We, <laughs> who in their right mind wants to willingly face betrayal, hardship, persecution, and ultimately a horrific death? Well, Jesus Christ did. And because of God the Father's great love for us, he was spurred on to endure what was ahead. As we read through Matthew 21 through 26 over the last couple of days, Jesus knew that this leg of his journey was going to lead him to the cross and that it was going to be filled with hard times. That's our focus for today. Jesus decided to go anyway and praise God for his obedience even to die on a cross. Judas <laughs> conspired to portray Jesus before the Passover meal. Don't miss this. He had his conversation with the chief priest before the Passover meal. Now I want you to picture this. They're having the Passover meal and John tells us in John 13, 1 through 11, that this is the moment when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And here's Jesus. He is serving his disciples. He's washing their feet. Let's don't be under any illusion that Jesus didn't wash the feet of Judas. Judas was there for all of it. What a humble service. And I think Jesus throughout the meal and even when he was washing Judas Iscariot's feet was hoping that Judas would change his mind even though he knew that he wouldn't. Why would I say that? Because God created us with free will. Judas had every opportunity to change his mind. It was a very hard time for Jesus. And then it gets worse. During the Last meal, during the Passover meal, Jesus tells Peter that Peter will deny him three times before the rooster crows. Matthew 26, verses 36 through 46. Another disappointment, another hard time. How about when Jesus takes three of the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray with him, and he asks them to keep watch, and they fall asleep. Matthew 26. 30, oh, Matthew 26, 36 through 46. And then Judas shows up in the garden with the chief priests and their soldiers, and they arrest Jesus only after Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss. Matthew 26, verses 69 through 75. They haul him to court. They can find not a single solitary soul that will bring a piece of evidence against Jesus. It's only when he affirms their own statements that they decide to take him to Pilate. Matthew 27, verse 11, is when Jesus is with Pilate, and Pilate says, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, It is as you say. He only affirms that Jesus never defends himself, not before the high priest and not before Pilate. He only affirms what they say. Then the crowd decides to choose Barabbas, <laughs> a known criminal, to be released instead of Jesus. And that's when everything turns dark. Jesus is flogged. He's beaten. He is has a crown of thorns fashioned and pressed into his skull. He's given a reed as a staff, and they put a scarlet robe on him. The whole time, they're mocking him and beating him. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, he carries his own cross on a journey to Golgotha, and 
the people lining the streets are spitting at him. They're hurling things at him, and they're insulting him. Matthew 27, verses 32 through 44. I've covered a lot here. I want to encourage you to read these passages. As I've said, Jesus knew before he ever entered Jerusalem, all the way back in Matthew 21, that he was going to be facing these hard, horrific times. And he decided to go anyway. These were hard times, no doubt. They're beyond our comprehension. And yet, this was the path that Jesus walked in order to provide a way of salvation for us. Our redemption, our restoration, and our reconciliation with the Father. Here are my questions. Knowing the road ahead will have hard times. Will I go anyway? Not knowing the hard times ahead. Will I go anyway? Am I prepared to go anyway and trust God? What's the Holy Spirit leading me to do today? What's the Holy Spirit asking me to take action on today? Am I going to choose the way of Jesus that leads to a full life? Or am I going to choose my own way? Now I'm praying for us. I know we covered a lot of material here today. This is a week-long journey, folks. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth from His Word. Let's have receptive hearts and minds to receive these truths. And then, let's take a step of faith with the same boldness, commitment, and courage of Jesus to do what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.